Red Snow by Tanner Hall The year is 1944, and the war that shaped the course of our history is raging on. After fighting for two months in Holland, the 101st Airborne Division realized that they would not have their R&R &R in France, and that they would spend another Christmas in Europe. Then, on the 16th of December, Eisenhower received word that the, in Belgium, Hitler had launched a surprise attack through the Ardennes. On the 17th, Eisenhower made two critical decisions. The first was that he ordered 7,000 trucks to stop what they were doing, which was hauling supplies from Normandy Beach, and haul his reinforcements to the Ardennes. And he then declared that Bastogne, a city in Belgium, was to be held no matter what. He sent in the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions to hold them. For the first time ever, due to bad weather, the Screaming Eagles had to go into combat on wheels. Captain G. William Sefton of the, of the 501st Regiment said, We were jammed into cattle trucks. Really, these big, huge semis with no cover on them, just steel sides. 501 was the elite unit of the 101st. The 501st Infantry Regiment were one of the first into Bastogne. When the 101st arrived in Bastogne on December the 19th, they were astonished to see what to see marching before them down the road heading west more than 80 troops of the 28th. These men were in a panic to get away from the Germans. Many of them had thrown down their weapons. The men from the 101st went through the 28th, taking weapons, supplies, and ammo the men of the 28th giving it away carelessly, the 28th telling the eagles, they're everywhere, go back, and the 101st pushed on. Then the 101st rushed to, Bastogne, to the Bastogne crossroads, merely ahead of the German panzers, and dug in. The Germans surrounded the city with an overwhelming force. However, the American roadblocks in their region stalled them. Even surrounded by the entire German army, the 101st morale remained high. On December the 19th and on, the Germans tried to overrun the Americans. The events that followed would scar these soldiers mentally. The German infantry was full of young boys around 15 and up. Of, these, of the men fighting in Bastogne, a machine gunner named J.B. Price said, there were five divisions total, three divisions of regular troops backed up with two divisions of Hitler Youth, and they attacked. I, I didn't know there was any young kids, and it was a young girl, and I ripped her all the way through, almost cut her in half with the thirty caliber machine gun. And we always, when you rebel their attack, go to counterattack and you go and make sure they're dead because sometimes they'll play dead and shoot you in the back and her helmet fell off her head and her blonde hair was streaming out and man I got the shakes and all I could do was weep and cry for her because she didn't look no more than 14 or 15 the German army was had 22 divisions of artillery firing on the town of Bastogne after rebelling the German attack, the Americans counterattacked. And at one point, the American soldiers were pinned down in an apple orchard, and German snipers began to take out the American troops one by one. The 101st retreated back to Bastogne. Now the casualties began to pile up inside the town. Most of the men went untreated because the Germans had captured the division's medical supplies. So with nothing to do, most of the troops, after being patched up, went back to the lines and fought. On December 22nd, German General Fritz Brine, CO of the Panzer Layer Division, sent a letter saying, To the U.S. commander of the encircled town of Bastogne, the fortune of the war is changing. This time, the USA's forces, in and near Bastogne, have been encircled by strong German armored units. More German armored units have crossed the river Our near Orthoville, have taken Marchy 
and reached St. Hubert. By passing through Hompere Sibet Tillet, Limbromont is in German hands now. There is only one possibility to save the encircled USA troops from total annihilation. That is, the honorable surrender of the encircled town. In order to think it over, a term of two hours will be granted, beginning with the presentation of this note. If this proposal should be rejected, one German artillery corps and six heavy AA battalions are ready to annihilate the U.S. troops in and near Bastogne. The order for firing will be given immediately after this two hours term. All civilian losses caused by this artillery fire would not correspond with the well-known American humanity, the German commander. After reading the German note, General Anthony McAuliffe sent back his reply, Nuts. And even though this was an act of courage, the 101st supplies were becoming very low. The 101st began to improvise on weaponry now. In one case, using an old German mortar tube and packing it into the mud, the soldiers used it to fight the enemy. However, the Germans were not the only enemy. The bitter cold of winter and the agony of hunger attacked the 101st. Some soldiers stole livestock from local farms. Fortunately, though, on the 23rd, the skies were clear, and the Army Air Corps went into action. Medium bombers began to take out German supply lines. Z-71 Dakotas were the best sight to the Eagles. These aircraft dropped supplies, including ammo, food, water, blankets, and weapons. On Christmas Day, though, the Germans tried their biggest offensive, but to no avail. And then, on the 26th of December, 1944, the 101st Airborne Division was relieved by the 3rd Armored Division, commanded by General George S. Patton. The Screaming Eagles had survived the Battle of Bastogne.